in the name of the law, we bring you another of the thrilling stories in this exciting series, taken from actual police case. Our story begins at a modest home in a small Texas town. It is early morning. Oh, darn that clock. Get up, Sue. Past seven, almost. Sue. Oh, Sue. What in tarnation is the matter with you? You're dead or... Sue. Oh. The alarm went off. Oh. Come on, get up. Oh. It's so dark. Oh. oh. Yeah. It looks like rain. Well, in April showers, I guess. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible. What's terrible? <laughs> Say, what are you moping about? Oh. Oh. Well, Sue, what's the matter? Don't you feel well? Tell me, what's the trouble? Oh, Jim, I had, I had such an awful dream. I awful dream? Oh, don't be silly. You had me pretty scared for a minute. A dream. Uh. This is so, so terrible. It seems so real. Well, what'd you dream about? Mother. I dreamed she was... Poison. Oh, oh, stop crying like a baby. Now stop it. Just because you had a crazy dream is no reason for you to be crying all over the place. Jim? What? I'd like to visit Mother today. What? Travel over a hundred miles just because you ate something that didn't agree with you and you had a bad dream? But it was so real, so vivid. I can see Mother now. You can ask her how she's feeling. Oh, Jim, don't be sarcastic. It, it's what you call a hunch, I tell you. I have to see Mother. Please. Let's go today. Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Please, Jim, let's go. No. Please, I, I've never asked that of you before. Sue? What is it, Jim? You're serious about that, aren't you? About wanting to visit your mother. I was never more serious in my life, Jim. Please, will you come? Yes. Oh, On one condition. What is it? That you forget about that dream and don't give it another thought. I'll try, Jim. Well, we leave right after breakfast. (laughs) You foolish girl. And that isn't all. You should have seen how she carried on all the way down here. Is that right, Sue? Oh, don't believe him, Mother. You know how Jim always exaggerates? Mm, from the look in your eyes, Sue, I think this is one time that Jim is telling the truth. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. How do you feel, Mother? Oh, uh, yes, I'm beginning to feel my age. When you're over 80, you can't stand the sun and the rain. Why, well, that? do you mean to say you do work? Not much. Just putter around the garden a bit and look after the chickens. Well, what's the matter with John? Why can't he help you? That's right. He's your son. Why don't we lend a hand? You don't excite yourself, Jim. John is helping all he can. And besides, I wouldn't be happy unless I had something to do. You know that. That may be so, Mother, but you're... You're not a young woman anymore, and... Oh, why don't you say it, Sue? I am an old woman. I shouldn't work because I may die any minute. Oh, Mother, I didn't mean that. Well, let me tell you something, Sue. And you too, Jim. I'm not ready to die yet. But when I am... When I am... Mother! Mother, what's the matter? What? She's fainted. Mother! Mother! Get a doctor, Jim. Get a doctor! Yes, sir. What can I do for you? You're, you're the sheriff, aren't you? That's right. Dunwoody is my name. Bill Dunwoody. Yeah. Well, have a chair. Yeah, thank you. Uh, your name is... Uh, uh, sheriff, I'm here on a kind of a mysterious mission. Something that's really not my business. But I feel that I must tell you about it. I see, mister. Oh, I, I didn't get your name. Well, I'd rather not tell you my name, sir. 
Uh, you can just call me Jones. That's as good as any, I guess. What's on your mind? Well, I have an idea there's been some foul play. Murder, to be exact. Who? When did it happen? Uh -huh. I'll tell you everything I know, but it isn't very much. Go on, sir. I'm all ears. You heard that Mrs. Viola King died, didn't you? Yes, I did. I died yesterday. Well, she was an old lady. Over 80, I hear. Maybe that's why it doesn't seem uh, suspicious. And you want to tell me that she was murdered? Uh, yes. How? Poisoned, I guess, but I, I'm not sure. Hmm. How do you know this, Jones? Well, that's something I'd rather not discuss. I must be left out of this entirely. Are you related to Mrs. King? No, sir. Do you know who administered this uh, poison? No, sir, I don't. Do you know anything else that can help us? No. Nothing else, eh? Nothing. I've told you all I know. Do you live in town? Yes, and I'll keep in touch with you if you want me to. Yes, I certainly do, uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah, that's all then, I guess. Goodbye, Sheriff. I'm glad to have met you. Uh, good day, sir. Uh, send Smith in right away, will you? Send for me, Sheriff? Yeah, sit down, Smith. I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. uh, shoot. What is it? Uh, someone just told me that Mrs. King was murdered. Poisoned. What? That old lady? What did anyone want to kill her for? Sit tight, Smith. In the first place, I'm not sure that it is murder. But if it is, we'll find out more than just why it was done. Uh, sure, all right, sir. Now, I want you to get busy. Get hold of the doctor that treated her when she died. Find out what he knows. And if he suspects murder, have an autopsy performed. Right. One other thing, Smith. Yeah. Not a word of this to anybody. If it is murder, we don't want—we don't know who's involved yet. I get you, Sheriff. Don't worry. All right. You treated her when she died, didn't you, Doctor? Yes. Now, tell me, did you think her death was natural? Uh, what do you mean? Well, was there anything suspicious about Mrs. King's death? Uh, offhand, I'd say there was. What do you think was the cause of death? I believe Mrs. King was poisoned. You do, huh? Yes. She showed all the symptoms of strychnine poisoning. Uh, you mind telling me what those symptoms are? Well, there were uh, convulsions and uh, shrinking of the iris of the eye. That indicated poison. Yes. But I performed a more uh, certain test on Mrs. King. I stepped behind the head of her bed and clapped my hands, uh, like this. What happened then? It sent her into another convulsion. A little later, I repeated the test, and the same thing happened. Now, we get that result in two kinds of cases, strychnine in poisoning and tetanus. So I examined Mrs. King for some wound uh, which might have uh, been caused by a rusty nail. And? And I found nothing, not a scratch. Uh, that eliminated tetanus. So you think she died from strychnine poisoning? Is that it, Doctor? I'm inclined toward the strychnine theory, yes, but uh, suggest that a careful examination be made. We'll take care of that, Doctor. Uh, tell me, Doctor, if you suspected poison, why didn't you notify us? Uh, there on my desk uh, is a letter I'm writing the sheriff. Oh, don't forget, Doctor, not a word to anyone, you understand? Perfectly. Uh, what did you do after you left the doctor, Smith? Well, I arranged to have an autopsy performed immediately, and some specimens were rushed to the state laboratory. Did you tell them we were in a hurry? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I instructed them to tell us about the result here. What else? checked on who was around Mrs. King the last few days. I found something very interesting, incidentally. What? Mrs. King's daughter and son-in-law visited her a little while before she died. Came up from San Angelo. Is that so? Yeah, I thought you'd be interested in that, Sheriff. There's something for you, Sheriff, on the teletype. Uh, come on, Smith, let's go. Maybe that isn't fast, huh? Report on examination. Mrs. Viola King. Stomach content submitted. Indicate presence of strychnine in sufficient quantity to cause instant death. What do you think of that, Sheriff? Uh, come into my office. One thing is certain, Smith. We've got a murder on our hands. And I'm sure certain of another thing, Sheriff. What? That we're going to solve this case. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Now listen to me. I want you to visit every drugstore in town. Find out if anyone bought strychnine during the last week. Yeah. That's all for you now. And while you're out, I have a few little ideas of my own. Now get going, Smith. We can't lose any time. Right. And get back here as soon as you can. There's plenty to do yet. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> Miss Hagen? Yes? My name's Dunwoody. I stepped in to tell you how sorry I was to hear about your, your loss. Thank you. This is my husband. Jim, this is Mr. Dunwoody. He knew mother. What do you do? You were a friend of Mrs. King? Well, uh, yes, I knew her. Grand old lady, all right. Yeah, she certainly was. Well, John, this is Mr. Dunwoody. This is my brother-in-law, Mr. King. How do? Mr. Dunwoody was one of your mother's friends, John. He just stepped in to... Uh, don't make me laugh. One of my mother's friends. Well, what do you mean? Wasn't he? I knew your mother, Mr. King. I met her a few times. That's not so. You didn't come here to tell us how sorry you are or to pay your respects. John, please don't talk that way to a friend Don't tell me what to do. This guy's a sheriff, see? He's here snooping, that's what. Sheriff? Yeah. Now, just a moment, folks. Don't lose your heads. I'll explain everything. This is a pretty poor time Please. to Please, take... just a minute. You folks are all upset, and I don't want to... Are you the sheriff? Yes. Well, what do you want? Mr. Fagan, if you ask that way, I'll answer you the same way. I'm here on official business. Official business? What is it? I'm here to investigate the death of Mrs. Viola King. Investigate? Why? What the... Is anything wrong? Mrs. Fagan... Your mother was poisoned. Oh. What? I didn't oh. want to be so blunt, but you gave me no alternative. Your mother was murdered. I'm here because I want to find out who killed her. Oh, come now, keep your chin up, Sue. If what the sheriff says is so, I should be anxious. What I said about. is so, all right, Mr. Fagan. I received the report from the state chemist this morning. There's absolutely no doubt that Mrs. King died from strychnine poisoning. I'd never dreamed that anyone could... Hmm. What's the matter, Mr. Fagan? Why'd you stop? You're Mrs. King's daughter, aren't you? Yes. I, I recognized the resemblance immediately. You knew Mrs. King? Indeed, I did. She was the dearest lady. Oh, this is terrible. She wanted so much to live, and I... I just want to tell you how sorry I am, Mrs. Fagan. That's your name, isn't it? I've heard your mother talk about you so many times. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Dancy. I live in that little white house up the road. Thank you so much for coming in, Mrs. Dansby. How are you, John? How do you think I am? John. Oh, now, don't worry. I understand. He's so upset. Well, so are we all, but there's no reason to be impolite. Fagan, when I ask you how to act or what to say, you can tell me. John, please don't lose your temper. Well, I, I'll be leaving now. Goodbye, Mrs. Fagan. Goodbye, Mrs. Dansby. Just a meddling old fool. Always minding everybody else's business. Gives me a pain. Sorry I had to hear all this nonsense, Sheriff. Don't worry about me, Mr. Fagan. I'm a pretty understanding guy. You've got to be around here, I guess. Uh, Mr. Fagan, just before Mrs. Danby, uh, that was her name, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, just before she entered, uh, you said something that intrigued me. I said something that... Huh. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean, Sheriff. Well, you started to say something and then stopped suddenly. I asked you what happened and just then the door opened. Funny... I don't recall it at all. I wish you would. You started to say something about never being able to dream that anyone could do something or other. Uh, poison Mrs. King, I guess, is what you meant to say. But you stopped. Now, uh, what's it all about? Uh, I, I I, don't remember what I was going to say, Sheriff. Fagan, I don't believe you. You don't believe... Say, I don't like that tone of voice one bit, Sheriff. And I don't like your line either. You're concealing something, Fagan, and I want to know what it is. I'm concealing nothing. Don't try to be so darn cagey, Sheriff. Who do you think you are, anyhow? Sherlock Holmes, Fagan? I'm not playing any games with you. This is a murder case I'm working on, and if you know anything more serious, I'd like to know what it is. Please, I, I can't stand all of it. it. It'll drive me crazy. Stop it, Jim. Stop it, I said. And you, Sheriff, please don't yell that way. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Fagan. <laughs> what are you laughing about, King? Nothing. It just amuses me to see a couple of grown-ups acting like blooming idiots, that's all. I ought to punch you right in the face, John. Why don't you try it? Of course, I'd kill you. You yeah, did. You want to know why Mrs. King died, Sheriff? Why don't you ask this guy? Our son. He knows. Shut up! Uh, Are you... Now, now, the next time I use this gun, I'm not going to aim at the ceiling. Now, sit down, King. You too, Fagan. You feeling all right, Miss Fagan? Yes, I, I'm all right. I, I'm fine. Fine. Howdy, sir. You told me you wanted me here right immediate. Okay, what's the idea of that? What? The gun. What's up? Nothing. We're just having a nice little tea party. Uh, sit down. 
Uh, Smith, do you know these people? Yeah. Yeah, they were pointed out to me at the funeral. Okay. Now, Fagan, what did you mean when you said King knows who killed his mother? Why don't you ask him? I'm asking you. What is it? Well, it'd be to help his mother instead of letting her do all the work, she wouldn't have died. Mm. Now you, all of you, sit tight here for a few minutes. Uh, oh, Smith. Yeah? Come here, I want to talk to you. Right. Jim, why don't you control yourself? And you too, John. Is this the time to be acting like children? Uh, fighting? It wasn't my fault. If he ever opens his mouth again, I'll do the same thing. <laughs> don't make me laugh. Uh, okay, Smith, that was fine work. Now let's get down to business. Fagan. What? Do you know who killed Mrs. King? No. How about you, King? I don't know, if that's what you're asking. And you, Mrs. Fagan. Do you know anything about your mother's, uh, uh death? No, sir, I, I don't. Tell me, Mrs. Fagan, uh, do you do a great deal of traveling? A great deal? No, I don't think so. Well, you have left San Angelo from time to time. Oh, yes. During the last two weeks? Yes, that's right. Uh, King, what is it? You had uh, an argument with your mother recently, didn't you? Yes. What about? Well, my mother was an old lady, kind of an eccentric. I didn't like the way she handled her finances and all that. What do you mean by that? Well, she didn't have much money, but she had a habit of giving it to anyone who gave her sob story. Uh, Who, for example? That's why I had a scrap of that. She wouldn't tell me. Mm. How much money did she give away? I don't know. A few hundred, I guess. Smith. Yes, sir. You were down at the bank, weren't you? Yeah. What'd they tell you? Mrs. King's statement was returned to her with all the vouchers. Hear that, King? What about it? The canceled checks were returned to your mother. You know who got the money. I don't, I tell you. And I don't believe you, King. Now, out with it. Where is the money? If you think I took my mother's money, you're crazy, Sheriff. I know a couple of guys in the death house who said that about me. Why, Sheriff, you don't really think that John was... Mrs. Fagan, it doesn't make any difference what I think. I'm only interested in solving this murder. If I have to step on some toes as I close in on the killer... Well, it's just too bad. Can't be helped. Yes. Yes, of course. Now, I want to ask you a few questions again, Miss Fagan. Before Mrs. Dansby entered this room, your husband started to say something and stopped suddenly. He stopped because you looked at him, stared at him. You don't think I noticed it, but I did. Now, spill it. What are you keeping from me? I, I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking now, about. You? you about it. Go on, Smith. Mrs. Fagan, when you visited your mother the other day, you told her you had a dream about her the night before. Is that right? Why, yes, that's right. Well, what did you dream? Why, I I don't recall exactly. Yes, you do. Just think about it. I'll tell you, Sheriff. She dreamed that her mother was poison. I started to say something before and used the word dream. That's why I stopped so suddenly. My wife didn't want you to know about that because... Well, because it sounds so... so unbelievable, I guess. I knew exactly why you stopped. Now, Mrs. Fagan, I'm going to talk to you straight from the shoulder. You claim you had a dream that your mother was poisoned. Is that right? Yes. You were so upset that you decided to visit your mother. When you arrived, she was hale and hearty. A little while later, she died. No one... Oh, Oh, you're still here. I'm sorry. Sit down, Miss Dansby. I'll be through soon. Thank you. Mrs. Fagan... A little while later, your mother died. No one but you and your husband were present when she was poisoned. Now, which one of you murdered her? You mean... You mean I killed my mother? Sheriff, maybe it does look bad for us. Maybe. Past the maybe stage, Fagan. I tell you, the murderer of Mrs. Viola King is in this room. Where are you going, King? Uh, uh, no place. Just looking for a chair. Out for some air. This uh, room isn't big enough for all of us. Stay where you are. Mrs. Fagan, you visited the town of Anson recently, didn't you? Yes. Well, Detective Smith has located a druggist that sold some strychnine to a woman last week. What have you got to say about that? Uh, oh, for heaven's sake, arrest me. Kill me. Do anything you want. I don't care. Maybe I did murder my mother. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't a dream. Maybe it was real. Real. She's faded. Oh, Come on, get some water. Somebody quick, I'll get the water right away. There we are. All right, Sue, you'll be all right. Get some water. Oh. 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 Maybe it wasn't a dream. It was all so, so strange. When I came here, the auto, the auto... Well, what about the auto? After the dream, later, when we came here... The auto, the wheel. Uh, Miss Fagan, look at me. Look. 
Now, now, tell me about that dream and about the auto. Tell me everything. I dreamed my mother, dearest mother, I... What are you knitting, Mother? A sweater. If I ever finish it. Mother? What is it, Sue? What's wrong? You look so sad, rocking and crying. Please tell me, what's the trouble? Nothing. Nothing is wrong. You're not telling the truth. You're worried. Oh, I guess I am, Sue. Why? See this sweater, Sue? I'm knitting it for myself. For the cold weather. But I have a feeling. A feeling. About what? Please tell me. Please. Sue, I have a feeling I'll never finish it. Never. Why? Because I'm not feeling so well. My heart, it feels like... Like I... Like someone poisoned me. It burns. Burns. Everything burns. And, and I'm sweating cold. Oh. Mother! Mother! Speak to me! Speak to me! Mother! Sue! Sue! What in tarnation is the matter with you? Sue! Oh, oh, oh Jim. It was terrible. But what was terrible? I had an awful dream, and it seemed so... That was your dream, Miss Fagan? That's exactly how she described it to me, Sheriff. Hmm. And now, Mrs. Fagan, you said something about an auto. Uh, what about it? After the dream, after Jim promised to take me to my mother, we drove here in his auto. In yes. his auto. And... Go on, Miss Fagan. You drove here in your husband's auto. Uh, what happened then? The wheels, the wheels. All they were saying was, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. Too late. It's too late. Poor woman. If she had anything to do with her mother's death, I'll eat my hat. I think she's falling asleep, Sheriff. Yeah, best thing for her. Oh, Smith, come here a minute. Yeah, what is it, Sheriff? What do you make of it? You said something about there being nobody else in the house and Mrs. King died. That is, nobody beside Mr. and Mrs. Fagan. That right? Right. Well, what was Mrs. King doing? I don't know. Oh, Fagan. Yes? What was Mrs. King doing just before she died? Well, near as I can remember, she was sipping some tea. Say. What's the matter? After the, after the doctor left. Say, that sure is funny, all right. What are you talking about, Fagan? After the doctor left, the cup. It was gone. That must have had the poison. Uh, who was there? Just me and my wife and the doctor. And, oh, yes. Mrs. Dansby came in when she saw the doctor's car. Where are you going, Mrs. Dansby? Why, I, I have to leave all this excitement. Stay where there. you are. Uh, Mrs. Dansby, what do you know about this? I, I don't know anything about it. it it's all so upset. Well, what are you shaking about? I'll tell you why she's shaking. She poisoned my mother, that's why. She took her money and killed her. That's what she did. Is that right? Oh, no, no, I didn't. Smith, yeah. get that handsome druggist over here. I want him to identify her. Right. No, I bought the street and I bought why? it. Why? For the dogs. They were after my chickens. What chickens? You haven't got any chickens. <gasps> Mrs. Dansby, you murdered that old lady. Yes, I did. She had more money than she could use. And I needed it more than she did anyhow. I decided... You took some of them from her, didn't you? I wanted more. I wanted all she had. What did you do? I gave her half a lemon. But before I did, I smeared some poison on it. She didn't see me. Then you removed a cup and destroyed the lemon. When the doctor arrived, I knew it was over. I walked in, washed the cup and saucer, and threw the lemon away. Why are you telling this story to us? Why? Because you'd find out anyway. I know it. I feel sure you would. And she... She would dream about me. I was afraid. I couldn't bear it. I'm afraid of dreams. Take her away, Smith. The charge is murder. <laughs> Who is this? Sheriff Dunwoody. Oh, I'm feeling all right, Sheriff. I have some news for you. Mrs. Dansby was found guilty. She was sentenced to 99 years. Yes, I know. You, you didn't dream about it, did you? No, my husband just phoned me. Hey, 
with us again when truth and justice triumph in the name of the law. <laughs>